In chapter 4.4, we'll be adding and subtracting polynomials. So before we get into that, uh, we just have to define what a polynomial is. So the definition is going to look a little bit confusing, but all a polynomial is is going to be uh, an expression where all of the exponents are whole numbers. So every exponent on the variable is a whole number. The coefficients, which is the numerical factor, are going to be real numbers and all terms are separated by addition. So I just have the more technical definition above it. a sub n times x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 and so on all the way to a sub 0, meaning uh, a sub 0 is a constant. And all of the a values there are just coefficients, they're just numbers. Okay, so for a couple of definitions of some of these terms here, we call a polynomial degree n. Degree n is the where n is the largest exponent on the variable. a sub n is the leading coefficient. It's the coefficient on the term with the uh, largest variable. a sub 0, it doesn't have a variable attached to it, so that one's the constant term. And we're typically going to be writing these in standard form, where standard form is when the exponents are written in descending order. So let's do a couple examples here. Uh, so for example, for the first one, 4x to the fifth minus 3x cubed plus 2x. So that's a polynomial because all of the exponents are positive whole numbers and all the coefficients are real numbers. And we would say this is a degree 5 polynomial because that is the largest exponent. Okay, and then another one we could have something like radical 2 times x to the seventh minus three. I'll keep going, minus three x to the fifth plus two x cubed plus one. And we would say that this is a degree seven polynomial because that's the largest exponent. And notice that both of these are in standard form written in descending order with the exponents. So that's a polynomial because it's all whole number coefficients. A, a whole number exponents and then real number exponents. And then something like x to the 47th. So this one only has one term, but 47 is a whole number. The coefficient is one. So that technically is still a polynomial. And this is a degree 47 polynomial. Okay, so some examples that are not polynomials. Three times the square root of x plus 4x squared minus 5. So this is not a polynomial because we can write, rewrite square root as 3x to the 1 half plus 4x squared minus 5, which we'll be getting into that square root a little more. Uh, but for now, just think about it as this exponent. So an exponent of 1 half, that is not a whole number, so that is not a polynomial expression. And then something else like 4 over x squared minus 3x plus 1. So we can rewrite that first term as 4x to the negative 2, right? Just based on exponent rules. So negative 2 is not a positive whole number. So that one is not a polynomial expression either. And for the last one, 3x to the 4th minus 5x squared over 10x plus seven. So we have a polynomial in the numerator and denominator here, but when we're dividing polynomials, this is not a polynomial expression. This is something else called a rational expression. Okay, a couple more definitions. Um, we have a monomial. So a definition of a monomial is going to be a polynomial with one term. So for example, something like 3x to the fifth, that's a monomial because there's just one term there. So the prefixes tell us what kind of polynomial it is. Mono meaning one, and then for the next two we have bi meaning two, and tri meaning three. So for a binomial, this is going to be a polynomial with two terms. So for example, something like 4x plus two, that would be a binomial because there's two terms in that expression separated by addition. And then for a trinomial, that's going to be a polynomial with three terms. So something like 
x squared plus 5x plus 6 is a trinomial because there are three terms. So let's get into adding and subtracting them. So this, uh, hopefully at this point, is not awful uh, because when we're adding and subtracting polynomials, all we're doing is combining like terms. So for combining like terms, um, we just have to remember that like terms are terms with the same exact variables raised to the same exact exponents. So that's all it is for these. So let's do some examples. Uh, this is probably some review. So the, for the first one, we have negative 4x cubed plus 6x cubed. So we just have to add or subtract the coefficients here. So negative 4 plus 6 is 2. So we get 2x cubed. So they were like terms because they had the same variable factors. It was x cubed. Next one, we have 9x to the 6 minus 14x to the 6 plus x to the 6th. So we can combine all of these because they're all x to the 6 terms. So all we have to do is do 9 minus 14 plus 1. So 9 minus 14 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So this is negative 4x to the 6th. For C, we have y plus 2 thirds y. So they're like terms, they're both y terms. So this one's going to be adding fractions. So this is going to be 3 thirds y. We had to get a common denominator of 3, so I multiplied the first term by 3 over 3. Then we add the numerators. So we end up getting 3 plus 2, so 5 thirds y. Next one, we have 8RS minus 13RS plus 9RS. So they're both, or all three of those are like terms. They're all RS variable factors. So we have 8 minus 13, which is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 9, positive 4. So 4RS. Next one, negative 12M squared plus 5M plus 4M squared. So we have to be a little bit careful because we have the first term and the third term are like terms but the middle term is not a like term with the other two. So we have negative 12m squared plus 4m squared, that's negative 8m squared, and then plus that 5m, we can't combine the 5m because it's not a like term with the other ones. And for f, we have 5u plus 12b. So these are actually not like terms. We have a u and a v. So we can't combine them, so we just have to leave it as is. 12, 5u plus 12v. Let's make them a little bit harder now. <clears throat> we have 5x minus 2 minus 3x minus 8. So we have to distribute the negative 1 into, the, into that second binomial. So I'm going to drop the parentheses on the first one. That's 5x minus 2. Distribute the negative minus 3x and then plus 8. So 5x minus 3x is 2x, negative 2 plus 8, positive 6. So 2x plus 6. Next one here, we have uh, that big four-termed polynomial plus the another polynomial with four terms. So since we're adding them, we don't have to dis worry about distributing anything. We can just skip right to either dropping the parentheses or just combining like terms. I'm just going to uh, skip to combining like terms right away. So we have negative 9x squared plus 13x squared. Negative 9 plus 13 is 4, so 4x cubed. No, oh, I think I said squared a second ago, cubed. Then we have 7x squared plus 2x squared. That's going to be plus 9x squared. Negative 5x minus 8x, so negative 5 plus negative 8. That's negative 5 minus 8, so that's negative 13x. And then lastly, we have 3 plus negative 6. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So we get 4x cubed plus 9x squared minus 13x minus 3. So two more here we have uh, for the next one we're subtracting. So we have that big first polynomial where we can just drop the parentheses. The second one we have to distribute this negative. So I'm going to drop the parentheses and rewrite the first one. 
And then for that second polynomial distributing the negative, that's minus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 9. Now we can just combine like terms. We have x cubed and an x cubed. So 7 minus 2, we get 5x cubed. Next, we have negative 8x squared plus 6x squared. So negative 8 plus 6, that's negative 2x squared. Then we have 9x plus 3x, so that's going to give us plus 12x. And lastly, we have negative 6 minus 9. Negative 6 minus 9 is negative 15. So 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 12x minus 15. Okay, last one here, a little bit different setup. We want to subtract 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2 from 11x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8. So the only thing you have to watch out for here is the setup. We're subtracting the first one from the second one. That means what the setup is going to be is 11x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8 minus 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2. So the order obviously matters and make sure you have parentheses around that second polynomial. We don't need them around the first one, but it is it looks nice to have it there. So I'm going to actually drop those parentheses around that first one now. And then we have to distribute the negative into the second one. So distributing that negative, we get minus 6x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2. And then combining like terms, we have 11x cubed minus 6x cubed. 11 minus 6 gives us 5x cubed. And then we have 2x squared plus 4x squared. That's 2 plus 4, so plus 6x squared. And then negative 8 minus 2, that's negative 10, so minus 10. So 5x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10. So for adding and subtracting polynomials, all this is is combining like terms. Okay, so that's it for 4.4.